Rosenstein on Thursday. We'll be meeting at the White House and we'll be determining uh, what's going on. We want to have transparency. We want to have openness. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein's future seems to be hanging in the balance tonight. This all follows the New York Times report late last week saying that he'd suggested perhaps secretly recording Trump and lobbying cabinet members to invoke the 25th Amendment. Sources tell NBC News that Trump decided not to fire Rosenstein after discussions over the weekend with aides and allies, and among other things, after being begged not to do so by Sean Hannity on live television Friday night. Rosenstein, will remind you, is a 28-year veteran of the Justice Department, has been overseeing the Mueller investigation since May of 17. He was at the White House today for meetings with Chief of Staff John Kelly, and officials say he did speak to the president by phone. Throughout this chaotic Monday, there were multiple accounts that Rosenstein had said that he would resign, as Ashley Parker and her colleagues at The Washington Post report, quote, the two hours and 10 minutes between the first report that Rosenstein had verbally offered to resign and the official White House statement that he was still on the job was a period of confusion in the West Wing and on cable news and Twitter, pure mayhem. Rosenstein's uncertain position has reignited concern that the president will try to end somehow the Mueller investigation. Today, one of Trump's lawyers suggested what would happen if Rosenstein were to leave. I think it's really important that there be a step back taken here and a review. And I think it's a review that has to be thorough and complete and a review that has to include an investigation of what has transpired with all of these statements and all of these allegations going back to the Strachan page and Bruce Orr and basically a timeout on this inquiry. Rosenstein's possible ouster raising still more warning signs for Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who got a mention from the president during a radio interview with Geraldo Rivera that aired this morning. Now, apparently, uh, you know, it, it, it seems that there are people in your own inner circle. Some This guy's in charge of the Russia collusion investigation, for goodness sake, and he's ready to stab you in the back. I mean, you must be yeah. unsettled about it. I'm not unsettled about anything, but I'll tell you what, uh, we are looking at it and it is, uh, you know, he was, he was hired by uh, Jeff Sessions. Uh, I was not involved in that process because, you know, they go out and they get their own deputies and the people that work in the department and Jeff Sessions uh, hired him. With us tonight to talk about all of it, Ashley Parker, Pulitzer Prize winning White House reporter for The Washington Post, Jeremy Bash, former chief of staff at CIA and the Pentagon. And we've convinced Frank Figluzzi to stay around for a bit more of our conversation. Uh, Ashley, this may require a judgment on your part, but you are ideally situated uh, to so judge. Uh, was today um, genuine tumult? Uh, for everybody, uh, uh, especially Rod Rosenstein, or was it a, a disco ball where shiny objects are concerned? I, I think it was both, but first and foremost, it was really genuine tumult. No one knew what was going to happen today. Rod Rosenstein, our understanding was that he went over to the White House prepared to resign, but fully expecting and being prepared to be fired. He is on the job at least until Thursday within the White House. And again, this is a White House that often operates against a backdrop of chaos. Things were even more chaotic than usual because the president and many of his top aides were in New York uh, for the opening of the United Nations General Assembly. You had Chief of Staff John Kelly back in Washington. So even a White House that is already a bit tumultuous, there was a lag time as they tried to figure out what was going on. One White House official, as we in the media frantically scrambled to try to figure out um, if uh, Rosenstein was staying in his job, was getting fired or was resigning, called my colleague uh, Phil Rucker at The Washington Post and basically said that the White House was trying to figure out the exact same thing, not just the reality, but their own talking point, whether they how they were going to try and spin it. So. Genuine tumult, but to the second part of your question, at the end of the day, it was kind of this disco ball because as of Monday night, nothing has actually changed yet. Uh, Ashley, I found it notable that Kelly walked him out to the car 
a little stretch of pavement called West Exec that's between the uh, White House and the old executive office building. You do so knowing that cameras are trained on that area and all those vehicles. And it's not often where the principal walks the guest out there. Kelly had to have known. I, th I think that's right. I, I think on, on the one hand, that was a little bit of a show of support. But I think this is also a White House that is trying to figure out what exactly they want to do with this situation. And one of the concerns that has been repeated to the president and that Kelly may have been trying to underscore in that public gesture is that on the one hand, at the end of the day, whether Rosenstein resigns or whether he's fired, the end result is the same. He's gone. He's no longer the, you know, deputy attorney general. That said, there is a tremendous difference between the president accepting his resignation which, while it might cause problems for the midterms, would be an acceptable solution to the White House, and the president firing him. And that is something that the president's senior advisors um, over the weekend today, but for quite some time now, have tried to explain to the president that he simply cannot do. If Rosenstein leaves, they say it has to be by his own decision and not by the president firing him, because that just adds another data point for Robert Mueller's investigation into obstruction of justice. And you're so right to point out that huge distinction. So, Jeremy, if in fact he leaves, uh, you and so many others who've been kind enough to be on our broadcast uh, regularly have said that a Rosenstein departure would equal a constitutional crisis or as close to one as you want to come, or are we there yet? Well, even before we get to departure, Brian, I think that a Thursday meeting is wholly improper. And here's why. Rod Rosenstein is overseeing an investigation into the conduct of the president. The president is a subject of the investigation, and many of his close associates are targets of that investigation. It is entirely inappropriate for the president to meet with Rod Rosenstein and do effectively what he did with Jim Comey before he fired Comey, which is to invite, in this case, Rosenstein to pledge loyalty, to say, are you on my team? Are you with me or against me? And to hold Rosenstein's job over his head, make him audition for the job he already holds. It's an effort by the president to pressure the investigation, in effect, to compromise it and to obstruct it. And now to our former Fed. Uh, Frank, how would Team Mueller view a Rosenstein departure uh, and how would they process it? What would it mean to them? So first, let, let me just echo what Jeremy said about the fact that a meeting on Thursday could actually turn into uh, a fact witness situation where now Mueller's team has to interview anybody present during that wow. meeting to ensure that obstruction was an occur, uh, yep. occurring and that they weren't discussing the special counsel inquiry. Now, how is the Mueller team reacting to this dry run we all went through as a nation today? They're prepared. They are prepared to press the send button on packages of prosecutions that would involve various state attorneys general and various U.S. attorneys offices. But rest assured, they treated today as rehearsal for what is almost inevitable because of the departure now of Rod Rosenstein, whatever the timing, is now not a question of if, but a question of when. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.